What do you think of when you think of Rome? Law, culture, perfect clean streets lined with the foundations of a new and unquestionable society? Yeah, right, we all know that Rome was a bit of a mess from founding to fall. The stories contained within would make good television, but if HBO or the History Channel did make a drama, they'd probably think twice about including these little details and stories. These are the top 10 bizarre events from ancient Rome that actually happened. And if you think that you know any weird Weirder stories, please let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Roman Laundry Detergent So my washing machine broke this past week, which was a pain in the neck. Worst thing about it was that it broke in the middle of a load, so I had to wash the rest by hand, which made me glad we have washing machines at all. However, the Romans were a little more simplistic with their methods of cleansing the cloth. Apparently, vessels were set out in the streets of Rome for anyone to just walk up to and relieve them themselves into, and once full, they'd be taken down to the local laundromat. From there, workers would mix the vats with water and pour the combo onto their patrons' clothes, proceeding to stamp the clothes until clean. Yeah, sure, clean. Number 9. The Fall of Drusus In the case of historical poisonings, it's hard to determine whether or not they were actually poisoned or just died from being old. It's usually that they're old. But in the case of Drusus, the evidence was a little bit more clear. See, Drusus Julius Caesar was set to be the heir to Tiberius due to familial relations. His buddy Sejanus would have normally been the one to get the title, but blood is thicker than water. As a result, Sejanus tried to marry his daughter to Drusus' son, but that fell through. Sejanus was still determined to become the heir to Tiberius by whatever means necessary. This led to the two infighting frequently, and Sejanus eventually managed to seduce Drusus' wife, Lavilla, who aided him in poisoning her husband, slowly killing him in a way that appeared to be natural, and he got away with it. Sejanus continued to rise to power until his sudden and brutal execution, which was later revealed to be due to someone leaking the truth about his rise to Tiberius. Man, this just needs to be a telenovela. Number 8. Decimation You've likely heard the term before used to describe the impact of some tragedy or another. However, the word actually has its roots in the Roman military, though its origin is a little different from how you might imagine. See, as I'm sure you know, the Roman military was infamous for its discipline and strategy. But if you've ever worked in any space with more than 10 people, you know it's hard to keep everyone in line. So how did the Romans do it? Simple. If one squad member screws up, the entire unit gets the punishment. Decimation roughly translates to removal of a tenth. The cohort would be divvied up into ten groups, and each group would draw lots. The group with the shortest straws were then executed by the other nine by whatever method was determined by their commander. The nine of the surviving groups were then made to survive off barley, and if they had to relieve themselves, it would be outside of the camp security. You know what? Maybe the military life just ain't for me. Number 7. The Crassus Cocktail ah, I love a good drink at the end of the day. Just getting a little mix here and there, it's just so fun. Ooh, if it's good, man. Just caps off a hard day of work. It seems like Crassus was a man of similar taste. A general and a statesman who'd earned the title the richest man in Rome. Dude ran a bunch of wars, serious campaigns, and his last was against the Parthians. Primarily because he was just kind of bent out of shape that the other generals were outshining him in the field. Unfortunately, Crassus's forces were absolutely slaughtered, and when his son Publius ended up being one of the casualties of war, Crassus went to parley. Negotiations went sour, and he and his entire party were wiped out. Apparently, after such a rough day, the Parthians figured that Crassus could use a little something to take the edge off, so they had him take a sip of molten gold. Fun fact, the uh, melting point of gold is about 1064 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that'll have a kick. Number 6. The Fall of Emperor Valerian One of the later emperors of Rome, Valerian rose to power simply and ruled simply. Went to war a few times, killed a bunch of Christians, got beat up by Goths, basic Roman stuff. So when Valerian was captured by Cameo of Shapur I, it 
boggles the mind why they went as far as they did in making sure that this dude wasn't just defeated, they made sure his entire genetic code wouldn't survive the humiliation he received. First on the menu was for the Chapur to use him as a footstool while mounting their horses. He was then given the Crassus Special, a big old bowl of molten gold right down the gullet, which may or may not have happened while he was simultaneously being alive. His skin was then allegedly stuffed with straw and died, hung in the Persian temple for all to see. Seriously, the dude just didn't like Christians. Chill. Number 5. Gaius Valerius Catullus Rap Battle Who doesn't love a good beef? Now, Catullus was a major poet, his works moving away from the retelling of classic tales and focusing more on the telling of day-to-day -day life. The personal nature of his works have lived in the minds of thousands, depicting humor, romance, and the beauty of day-to-day -day life. However, Catullus was no stranger to critics, two of his biggest being another poet, Furious, and Senator Aurelius. Now, constructive critique can be wonderful for artists. After all, it's the only way that you can improve. However, Catullus seemed to take a different view, writing a poem in dedication to his critics. Commonly referred to as Catullus 16, this poem was so filthy that it wasn't fully translated until the 20th century, and even then, several lines were heavily censored in most publications. Want to hear it? Well, it reads… Number 4. Roman Birth Control Romans were… Well, they got around a lot. Now, unless you want to deal with the immediate consequences of a whole lot of lovin', you've gotta figure out a way to stay safe. Picking up condoms from a shopper's wasn't really a thing, and Plan B hadn't been invented yet, so what was the plan? Well, it turned out that the Romans had discovered an herb called silphium, which supposedly had contraceptive properties. Whether or not that's actually true remains to be seen, specifically due to the fact that you can't find it anymore. That's right, the Romans were so raunchy and Silphium was so popular that they caused the complete extinction of the plant, the last stock of it reportedly being given to Emperor Nero. Now in 2020, there has been a theory presented that there is a similar herb, or a relative, found in Turkey, and it could be the surviving relative of the plant, but to this day, not a sprig of Silphium has been found. Apparently, it looks like a heart though. Aww, ecological devastation. Number 3. Roman Baths the terms made its way around. Roman baths are synonymous with the country and culture as a symbol of civilization. But you've listened to enough of this list so far, so you can probably figure out where this is going. See, while Romans were known for their hygiene, urine laundry aside, they were usually pretty nasty when it came to bath time. Soap wasn't really a thing, so the baths were basically just huge vats of oil that they just slather up all in there. Now these oils were perfumed, but they were also reused used frequently and were washed off using a strigil, a sort of scraping tool, so you know, just spoon the dirt off. Ugh. Number 2. Cato the Younger All right. Here's a fun one. Marcus Porcius Cato, also known as Cato the Younger, was a Roman senator in the later years of Rome. A hugely influential man, his life was fraught with turmoil and strife. He was also a strong opposer of Julius Caesar's Hellenistic principles. Uh, Cato had no trouble joining the opposition on the brewing civil war. Now, during that civil war, Cato took command of a campaign in Utica, a tough campaign that he generally just planned to abandon alongside the Roman Empire. However, one once they'd been defeated, Caesar moved to pardon Cato's family and allies. Convinced his end was drawing near, Cato took his life against his friends and family's advice, stabbing himself in the abdomen. Now, some accounts claim that he actually drew out his own entrails from his body when the physicians attempted to heal him, ensuring that he wouldn't see Caesar's Rome. Maybe he knew that Caesar was planning to pardon him as well, which Cato would have considered the crueler punishment. Number one. Caligula's horse. Ah, uh, we'd be remiss not to talk about the antics of Emperor Caligula. Famed for his strange ways, one of the greatest legends of an already infamous emperor was his attempt to have his favored horse, Incitatus, enlisted as a consul. According to Suetonius's Lives of the Twelve Caesars, this horse was dressed in lush finery, inviting dignitaries to dinners, and according to Cassius Dio, the horse was fed oats mixed with gold flakes 
snowflakes, and also possibly a priest? Uh, now, a lot of this is left up to debate, and a number of historians will argue that this was nothing more than a prank at the expense of the Senate. While never officially made a consul, this horse has lived on in infamy, inspiring a number of fictional depictions in modern media, including the metal band Caligula's Horse. Regardless of the official status of the horse, the truth seems to be that this was nothing more than an attempt to mock his senators, but what a method of mockery. Thank you for watching. To see more content like this, please like and subscribe.